Madam Chair, panelists, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, thank you for the invitation to take part in this panel. Yes, a very important topic for women in this day and uh, age. In Fiji, uh, I believe that for the empowerment of women for entry into the workforce, what we need, first of all, is a strong legal basis, a platform, a policy platform for the participation of women in the workforce. For Fiji, it's uh, contained in our constitution in, um, in relation to rights to equality, non-discrimination, and participation in the economic life. <laughs> With a strong constitutional background, it emanates down to our employment laws. But I believe what we're talking about here is in relation to the participation of women in paid workforce. As a mother, as a wife, women work 24 hours a day, full time. But we talk, when we talk about paid employment though, the story <coughs> changes a bit. What we see as barriers to women's participation in the world of work is not only structural, but is more social for a patriarchal society like Fiji. When I say social, I mean relating to gender stereotyping or me mentalities relating to what a woman can and cannot do, the kind of jobs that we can and cannot do. One of the strongest platforms for meaningful participation is accessible and affordable education, I believe. In Fiji, we have this um, in relation to the provision of free education for primary and secondary school. And when it comes to tertiary education, there is a scholarship scheme which is merit-based. And for those students who do not meet this merit test, they're eligible for very low interest loans from government to basically um, take up any form of tertiary, uh, tertiary education they wish to. So, but when we look at statistics, it reveals that at primary level, there are more males getting enrolled in school rather than females. But when we look at high school statistics, it changes. More females make it to high school than males. At tertiary level, there are more male graduates from trade certificates and diplomas. This would include electrical, mechanical, and other labor-intensive qualifications. Women graduates in this area account for around 30%. But when it comes to university degrees, more females than males get that qualification. Males in universities graduating account for around 30% of graduates. More women join the white collar workforce, and I'm talking about the biggest employer in Fiji, government. More males join the labor intensive workforce. No surprises given the trend that we have. But when it comes to the corporate ladder, the story changes yet again. More males make it to the upper ranks of the ladder than females. Disparate access to the informal networks available to men in a workplace, for example. We have what we call Talanoa sessions. Talanoa in my native tongue is a chat session. You'd have this in workplaces, and it's usually mentored by men, which is basically where women may not feel comfortable in taking part in these sessions. Or there's the role of caregiver waiting for the woman at home. Accesses to such um, networks do come into play in relation to the meaningful participation of women in a workplace. Other barriers relating to women, gender-based violence, another very a marked barrier for meaningful participation in the workforce. Statistics in Fiji and in the Pacific are quite high in relation to gender-based violence. In fact, our Prime Minister calls it a national shame. Statistics reveal that um, in a study carried out in Fiji that around 70% of women in their lifetime in Fiji have encountered gender-based violence in their life from intimate partners. To encourage women then to enter into entrepreneurship, <coughs> government ins invests quite heavily in uh, microfinance projects for women to empower them, to um, assist them in um, making their livelihoods. 
The success of this, I think, rests a lot on the fact that with microfinance projects, women are able to determine their own work conditions. It gives them the flexibility to look after their primary role as caregiver, where most women are currently employed. And uh, it also assists them in contributing meaningfully to the, to the livelihood of their families. For women in the workforce, gender-sensitized leadership is very important. To take an example in Fiji, in the past few months, a chief executive officer of a publicly listed company came out and stated that he wanted to see at least one woman on each and every board of the subsidiary companies of the company that he led. And this he achieved. This he achieved. Male leadership, recognizing the merit and the contribution of women in the economy. Another example, the governor of our Reserve Bank has publicly stated calling on corporate bodies to get women to sit on corporate boards. And my favorite example, our own Prime Minister. The reason why I'm here today as a politician, as a minister, was because our Prime Minister invited me to campaign with him, to stand with him in his party, and he told me because he wanted to see more women in parliament. So I think, apart from policy, a strong policy um, platform, structural barriers that are there can be strongly addressed through the participation of men, advocacy, awareness of males in leadership to take forth policies that would create an enabling environment for the meaningful participation of women in the workforce. Thank you. Can I say thank you so much for your comments, Minister. But in particular, I think your opening statement, which everybody here would agree with. Um, women do indeed, because of the nature of the caring role, work 24 hours a day. Uh, but it was your comment then, but when we talk about paid employment, uh, that is when it is just fundamentally different. They don't necessarily get that recognition. Um, I, I absolutely agree with you in terms of gender-based violence, uh, domestic violence being a barrier to participation. And it's something that obviously at CSW, uh, there's, a, there's a very, very strong focus on everything that we can do to ensure that we do uh, get rid of violence against women uh, and their children. But in particular also, um, as you said, uh, that women on boards um, have a great initiative singling out every single board and ensuring that there is a woman on each board. Um, in Australia now, for government boards, we have a 50-50 uh, target. That's it. Um, it was 40-40-10, and I sort of said to the Prime Minister, is there anything wrong with 50-50? Um, and we've changed it as well now to 50-50, and we're also making sure that we're transparent in terms of publishing all of the data on boards so people can actually hold to account um, the people who are appointing uh, boards but not having a gender balance. So I really do appreciate uh, the issues that you have raised.